Hey everybody, welcome back for day seven. Today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of a crow tutorial, so a little arm balance stuff for you. <laughs> uh, like I said yesterday, don't be nervous if you've never done it. I'm gonna kind of give it to you in little bite-sized pieces so that you can take what you want and, and go from there and incorporate it into your practice as you need to, as you want to. So let's get started, I'll meet you in the middle of your mat. Alright, so we're actually going to start in a down dog just to make it easy to transition. So you can bring the wrist under the shoulders, step the feet back, and lift the tailbone nice and high. If you need to, you can pedal out the legs if your muscles are still a little bit cold. So dropping one heel down, switching sides, you can do this as many times as you like. Then we'll find some stillness in our down dog, pressing both heels down equally. Letting the ears drop so that they're in line with the elbows. Press firmly into both hands. Pull the upper ribs down. And just take a big breath in. On your next inhale, the left foot is going to step all the way up. So we're just going to stretch the hips out a little bit just to start to come into some of those muscles around the hips and pelvis so that we can prep for our crow. So I step my left foot forward, my right hand is down just as support, and you can keep pressing the right hip forward. Make sure that the chest doesn't cave down, you want to keep lifting the sternum up. If you want, you can look over the left shoulder, and the left arm can do whatever you want really. It can stretch back, it can stretch up, it can stay down on the knee. Just take a couple breaths here. Breathing deeply in and out through the nose. You also may notice that if you turn your toes, let's say on your left foot, if you turn your left toes to the diagonal a little bit, it'll create a little bit more space in the groin and in the hips for you to open up. So however is comfortable, toes facing forward or toes out to the side, you can make that call yourself. And take a couple more inhales here. And then everybody turn your toes to the front of your mat. Take your left hand down on the outside of the left foot, tuck the right toes under, and step back to a down dog again. Lifting the tailbone high, pedaling out the legs a couple more times. And we'll do the same thing to the right. So as you're ready, you can bring the right foot all the way up. Drop the left knee down. And again, sink that left hip forward. Keep pressing the pelvis down. Keep lifting the sternum up, rotating the chest to the inside of the right thigh. And take a couple breaths. And when you're ready, go ahead and turn the right toes back to the front if they're not already there. Take the right hand down to frame the right ankle and then step back to a downward dog. Lift the tailbone really super high, and then nice and slow, go ahead and step, hop, or walk the feet up to the hands, taking a forward fold. On your inhale, lift the chest up. Exhale, bend the knees deeply, have a seat. We're going to lie all the way back. So if you've ever seen crow, it looks like a little, kind of looks like a bird. You're sitting up and your knees are way up and your triceps and the palms are flat on the floor. So it takes more core work than you would probably think. Like initially when you look at it, you're like, oh, my arms, they have to be so strong. And you do have to have strong shoulders and strong arms to, to hold you there. But it is mostly core work. It's so much core work and it's probably more than we think initially. So to kind of help you build that strength, one of my favorite tricks is this, this little number. So <laughs> from your backs, um, you can lie down. The knees are going to come wide, so the feet stay together and the knees come wide. And then I'm just going to flex my hands right up towards the ceiling, so almost like I'm palming the sky, really pressing my palms against that sky. And then I'm going to lift the hips up and bring my knees to the outsides of my triceps, as high up as I can get. So you don't have to hold your neck up there the whole time. But once you're ready to pull up, squeeze the belly in, lift the hips. Press the hands in towards that ceiling, point the toes, energize through the core. Squeeze the knees up as high as you can, take two breaths, hold it. And on your exhale, release down. Knees to chest, rock it out. It's intense, right? A little bit anyway, it can be. I'm gonna do it two more times, all right? 
So I'm going to try to hold it a little bit longer. So again, get your arms ready, wrists right over the shoulders, and then you're going to take the knees wide, feet together. So as you exhale, press up, you're going to lift the hips off the floor, bring the knees as high up on the arms as you can and keep pressing that ceiling away. Breathe. Don't hold your breath, most important thing. Find one spot to focus on. Squeeze it up a little more. Take one more breath in. On your exhale, lower down. <sighs> I know, I know. <laughs> Gonna rock around a couple times. <sighs> Ready for the last one? Last one, last one. A little practice run for you. Flex the hands, palms press into the sky, knees, or, um, knees apart, feet together. Squeeze the knees way up, get the hips off the mat, squeeze them up as high as you can, breathe. So hold the posture, but keep breathing. One more breath in. Full breath out and release down. <sighs> Good. <laughs> that one, you kind of just want to hold your breath. Make sure you don't though. When you're ready, you can rock up. One more prep um, pose for preparation for you is a Hindi squat. So. I'm going to turn to the diagonal for you just so you can get an angle. Both heels are going to be down. Typically, the wider the feet are set, the easier it is to keep the, the feet flat. Um, but you can adjust your stance if you want. So the feet normally feel best if they're turned out at an angle, at least to the diagonal. Uh, but again, that's up to you. If your knees bother you at all while you're doing that, not a problem. So bring the palms together. Bring the elbows to the insides of the thighs. You're going to lift the chest up and start to drop the hands down. So you're pressing the knees open just gently. So pull the lower belly in and continue to breathe. So you want to make sure that you're not caving forward. So if you have a mirror nearby or you can see a reflection anywhere, just be aware of hunching like this. You want to keep lifting the chest up so the spine stays nice and long. So the tailbone is really heavy and you're opening the knees back just to get that stretch in the hips and in the groin. Let the chin tuck slightly. And take one more breath. Good. You can release the hands down. So, we'll get started. The fun part. So you may have noticed I have a little guest with me today. This is a yoga block. Uh, very typical, but I promise you wouldn't need anything special. So if you have a yoga block, one of these foam ones, great. If you don't, guess what? A dictionary or a thick book will work just as well. So how we're going to use this is we're going to take it down to start. And just so that you have an idea of where you want the placement of your legs to be, I'm going to have you step on your block. So you're going to bring the balls of the feet to your block. And then you're going to squat down. So my knees are apart, my feet are pretty close together, and I'm going to take both hands to the floor. So now I'm in this like perch, like a bird would be perched up on somewhere. I'm going to spread the fingers really wide. If you think of your hands as your foundation, you want them to be directly under the shoulders, because if they're too narrow, your foundation's going to be kind of shaky and not as strong as if it were a little bit wider. So right under the shoulders, press firmly into the palms. And then from here, you can lift the hips up a little bit because you want to start to press the knees as high into the arms as you can. So maybe into the triceps, maybe into the armpits. It's going to depend on your flexibility and how comfortable you are. So any, any level is fine. From here, as soon as the knees touch the arms, I like to bend my elbows because that's going to give you a little shelf to lean on so that you don't fall forward right away. And it especially will help if, you're not, uh, if your shoulders aren't the strongest part on you. So um, we can do it together. I'm going to lift the tailbone up a little bit, press the knees into the tops of the arms. As soon as they touch the arms, bend the elbows. Now you have to lean into the fingertips a little bit, pull the belly in, pull it in tight, tight, tight. Maybe pull one foot up, maybe pull the other foot up. Ooh, and that happens sometimes. So if you're really comfortable in crow and you don't need a block, so if you can get your knees up into the arms without, you know, that extra bit of help, you can do that too. So it may even be easier. So you can try both ways. So bringing the knees as high up as you can, press into the hands, lean into the fingers, pull one foot up, maybe the other. And there's no, you know, no minimum time that you need to hold this or anything. Um, so feel free to keep trying it. You try it as many times as you want, just like so many other things. 
it takes repetition and repetition before you actually get it. Um, and the great thing about being at home is that you have pillows, I'm sure, <laughs> that you can arrange in front of your face so that it's not as scary if you fall down. Um, but don't be afraid of falling. It's part of it. It's part of the whole process. Um, so no worries. Again, use your block, use a book, and I hope that was helpful. Awesome, awesome job, you guys. I hope you had fun with it. I know that with something like that, especially if you keep falling or you can't quite stick it, it can be a little demoralizing, but stick with it, keep practicing that repetition, you know, it'll, it'll happen. That's the good news about yoga is that progress is inevitable. Um, tomorrow we're going to be coming back with some back bends and some stuff to make your spine a little bit more flexible, so show up for that.